episode. Welcome to Vista Talks, interesting discussions with interesting people from all around the world. I'm your host for today, Priscilla Charles, and I'm joined today in studio by Patricia Paradini Ader. Patricia is the Globalization Director Worldwide at CA Technologies. You're very welcome, Patricia. Thank you. So now let's move on and get on to the show. So Patricia, tell us a little bit about yourself. Can you take us through your background all the way up to your current activities, please? Sure. Uh, my background, I have a, a background on, I started my professional, my, my education with a degree on biology. That was a long time ago. Um, but while I was doing biology, I realized that I was kind of like, wanted to do some kind of med medical translation. So basically I, I moved into translation with the aim of going into medical translation. And in fact, I did a post degree in medical translation. But while I was doing that, I realized that the localization was very exciting. I was really getting very much into technology and how can we use technology, machine translation, translation management systems, etc., in order to help translators to do a better job, a quicker job, a more productive job, especially in the area of technical translation. Mm -hmm. So basically, I kind of sideways and move into this localization area. And uh, I was very lucky that, you know, I started working in different companies in a couple of LSPs. And I end up in the company I'm currently working, which is CA Technologies. And, you know, I started there as a translator, but now I'm really helping the company uh, to localize, to, you know, to sell, to enable international sales by providing software which is uh, localized and friendly and internationalized. Yeah, absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. it sounds really interesting. Um, and uh, you've, you've got quite a versatile educational path, what you were saying as well before, coming back to education. Mm -hmm. um, you have a master's degree in medical and environmental communication, mm -hmm. and you're also currently studying for your PhD in language interpretation and translation. Wow, I mean, very, <laughs> very impressive. Yeah, uh, going through a PhD has always been a dream for me. Uh, you know, it's a lot of work, so I'm not saying that, you know, or in fact, I'm saying that with a very small mouth because I just want to make sure I do it yes. before broadcasting it. But my focus, I would like to focus my PhD on internationalization readiness and how can we help companies to develop software which is internationalization ready. And I think there is quite a gap there for, yeah. for investigation at the moment because, you know, who, who is supposed to... Be to know how to internationalize the so developers. They don't teach that at you know at, at software school. Yeah. Or you know project managers. They don't teach. They are not teach on on that either. So so I think that's an area which I'm really interested in and I'm starting to investigate. That's wonderful. Well, we're really looking, looking forward to uh, the results of your research when you finish, when you complete the PhD. It will take a while. <laughs> okay, don't don't broadcast that too much. <laughs> so um. What, coming back to your um, to languages, um, what is it that triggered such a special interest in translation from the start? Because you, you, I understand you must have a passion for languages. You speak several languages after all. Spanish, Italian, French, Catalan. It's very impressive. Yeah. Yes, it is. In fact, um, I'm always very curious. I typically say that I do speak several languages, but I don't really speak any of them properly it's really kind of i'm halfway for everything i also started chinese a long time ago uh but you know i'm not able to speak a single word in chinese about about apart from say hello <laughs> anyhow <laughs> that's the only word but yeah um i'm i think it's curiosity basically i'm always very curious of what people is doing how they do things and going through languages for me was a way of stepping out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and and getting into the culture of what people do, the things they do in the way they do. I really, I'm very, it's really curiosity and, and starting from a, you know, my biology or my tech, um, medical background. Yes. In a way, going through the languages was a, a way of, of understanding a lot of communication because at that uh, uh, time, uh, most of the top communications of medical in the medical or biology area were basically in English. So I got really those books in English, and yes. uh, you know that brought me a lot of curiosity, and I really wanted to, you know, I guess that's why I moved into languages. How can I help people to understand 
uh, those tests. But then I went to technical <laughs> communication and you know and localization. So yeah. Yeah, that, stepping out of the comfort sense. zone. I think yeah. this is a personal challenge, I would that's, say. That's great. That's fantastic. There's no better way. I mean, mm. this is how you learn and that, that's just, just fantastic. And um, in your career, as as we're discussing, clearly demonstrate that you've developed a strong interest in technology from the start. Um, you've occupied several positions as a technical writer in various companies. And in 2008, you joined CA Technologies, um, where you started as a senior linguist. Um, you're now the globalization director worldwide, and um, CA um, CA has just been acquired by uh, Broadcom, and CA creates system and application software. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your role within the organization? I know you mentioned it earlier, but more in depth. You know, what sure. does it involve on a day-to-day basis? Um, yeah, yeah. I have I have to say that my career path has been basically at CA. It's been a long time and I'm, I'm working there. As I already mentioned, I started like a linguist position. Now I'm directing the worldwide execution for uh, localization. Um, it's really, uh, I would say that I'm lucky because for me, this role has been a learning experience. It's not execution only. I have a great team, which is doing a great, amazing job on execution. And this has allowed me to focus on innovation. CA Technologies has been a tremendous innovation company. They're doing great innovation. So innovation in the localization area. And CA has also given me the opportunity to to contact developers and understand the way they, they do the job mm-hmm. and what, you know, yes. to learn how can I help them to, you know, to make this software internationalization friendly. And also technical writers, you know, how can I help them to, you know, to write for machine translation, to keep machine translation in mind so we can get a better output, to standardize the content so we can simplify the processes. So basically, it's, it's really, um, it's been at CA, it's been great. Now, as you just mentioned, CA has recently been acquired by Broadcom, which is a semiconductor uh, company. It's really another area. Uh, it's also going to be very exciting. As I already mentioned, I love moving away from <laughs> from my comfort zone. So I'm very it's excited about yes. this opportunity. And let's see how it goes. You know, how can we uh, expand or can we share everything we've done at CA with, with Broadcom? And, you know, again, help people um, to get better on what they do. So globalization and internationalization can be a piece of cake for them. <laughs> yes, it is a... Uh... It is a new, a new era starting, mm-hmm. and um, and so we're talking about uh, we're talking about technology. And um, throughout your career, you've had, you've you must have identified a few trends that seem to be making a difference for global brands um, in the technology industry. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm kind of obsessed right now with the shift left concept. For me, is this is basically the tendency right now. Okay. What I mean by shift left or left shifting is basically that the more you standardize the source, the more you identify potential issues, the more you identify uh, potential um, um, pos- possible globalization or internationalization issues in the software development and the way technical writers write, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, the better or the smoother you're going to be able to do the, 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 the localization process. Um, and that also implies, you know, the, the, the more standardized the source. So it's, it's really worth investing in the source. Yes. So Absolutely. you don't need to worry yeah. about the target. So basically the localization process you know, you can automate more. Uh, you can put some measures in place in order to uh, control quality, control cost, etc. But my idea, or my vision is, the more the source is standardized, you standardize the source, the more managed by exception you can um, you can set up the, the, the localization process, which is basically the idea. I mean, getting it's, and. I just want to mention that this applies to the technology area. Of yes. course, it's nothing to do with medical, legal, or you know, even other areas of translation or marketing. This is basically even technology. Technology, um, like user guides or user interface, you want to share the message on how to do something. So you don't need to be creative. You don't need to, to, you don't need to be, you know try to like the user just just want to make sure that the message is written so the user can make things easier so my you know my 
focus right now is how can we make this happen? And, you know, everybody was looking at the translation. Everybody was looking at the translation management system. Yeah. I think we, sh- we need to step forward and have a look at, at the source. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. And yeah. also in the agile area, which everything is so quick and, you know, it vanishes so quickly that you need to take action and you can only do that through automation and source control. So that is that is absolutely really interesting. That's something that um, we don't talk about enough. Do, have you identified any other trends over the years? Or I know you're particularly you're focusing on this one at the moment. Is there anything throughout your career that for you sh- demonstrated that was ex- particularly important in the technology industry <laughs> should be taken into consideration. Yeah, machine translation has definitely been also a, a, a great step forward. At CA Technology, we were ahead of most companies and we implemented machine translation in-house. We had several engines, rule-based, statistical, and the beauty of that challenge was that at that time we were like a big team, in-house team, and we made those engines ourselves. So we really trained them and we, you know, we managed to um, to bring the machine translation in-house without getting people aware of uh, afraid or worry. Yeah. On top of that, because we were implementing machine translation and it was, was this was like six years ago, six or eight years, even eight years ago, um, we also managed to get through the technical writers and, and software developers to make sure that we were able to help them to write with machine translation in mind. And I'm particularly very, very proud on that Absolutely. on that area. Also, uh, as I already mentioned, CA Technologies is really an innovative company. Mm-hmm. So we set up some, some baseline for different technologies. We did the cross sourcing platform. Uh, we had a couple of patents on, on IT and readiness on a tool, a particular tool we developed to help developers um, to develop software with internationalization in mind. So, yeah, I would say those, you know, if out of this, on all the innovations yes. and all the challenges, those would be, would be the, the main ones. The main yeah, ones. Yeah. And having the great team, I mean, like, this could not have been done without the great team we have at CA. We have now and we have had in the last yes. 15 years. I mean, it's it's really people, the, the way people get the involved, people, and yeah. the way you, they get, you know, they make the project, their own project, so they... The passion, they yes, yeah, yeah. The passion they have. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. And um, um, so, yeah, it's, you were talking about machine translation and how important it is. Um, it will certainly have an impact on the localization industry on the long term, mm-hmm. do you think? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and especially now with our neural machine translation, I don't think this is going to... I mean, we need to embrace technology and tendencies like neural machine translation as something that's going to help translators. People get scared, they don't like, they are afraid. But not, that's, that's not the way we should embrace those new technologies. You, we always need to stand up, look at what's going Try to understand what's going to happen and, you know, m- find a way to make that in favor for you. I mean, you, you really want whatever tendency it's coming. You really want to take advantage of that instead of waiting until the technology runs you over. Um, we should be smart enough to adapt our process and adapt or, you know, or work to what's coming. So, yes. so when it really happens, it's there, we embrace it and we take advantage of that. Absolutely. And this is what happened with machine translation from in, in, as, in, my, in my experience. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah no, absolutely. And it's, and it's still the case, I think. Um, and we, we really have to, um, to embrace the technology, I think, especially in this area with artificial intelligence being... Uh, um, being around us in in many different uh, areas uh, mm-hmm. of our lives, so absolutely. And um, speaking of machine translation, you're you're currently teaching um, in university uh, project management for a machine translation projects and file preprocess for localization at the Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona. Can you tell us a little bit about your role as a lecturer? I'm really interested. What what's the type of uh, students that you have? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, this is part of a master's, we call it Tradumatica. This is a master's at the Autonoma University in Barcelona. Um, this was one of the mm, top masters 17 years ago because it was the first one uh, teaching technology for translators. 
Okay? Now, which is something that nobody can do a translation without a machine trans uh, sorry <laughs> a, a translation memory behind yeah. you no know, 17 years ago that was very was new, very new yeah. so so i used to teach in the master I teach there for about five years six seven years and then i got a break due to you know the priorities in life and now i'm back and i'm teaching as you just mentioned project managing uh, with machine translation and pre -fi uh, file pre-processing And it, it really circles back to what we have already spoken. I'm, I want to teach, help students to understand that, you know, if you want a machine translation, you want to manage a machine translation process, you know, there are some particularities you need to know how to, you know, how to create a quote, how to uh, measure the quality, yes. how to estimate how long is it going to take, what's going to be the productivity of the translators, etc. But on top of that, you want to work on the source. Again, you really want to make sure that the source is ready, so you pre-process the source yes. for machine translation. Because in this industry, you know, machine translation is something you need to embrace and you need to get used to it. And, you know, it's not going to take your job away. It's really going to give you more productivity an extra hand yeah yeah so so that's so that's what I'm kind of trying to to communicate to to the students um, what is the profile of our students that's an interesting question because I've seen a tremendous difference from 10 years ago when I used to teach and now that I'm really back teaching. <laughs> really I don't know students are quiet now in the past they used to be like very aggressive and they would like to challenge you yeah and now they're just listening to you and I don't know it's 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 different those millennial generation it's it's really things are changing they yes. they it looks to me that they really talk on whatsapp they talk on email but they don't talk in public so that's for me one of the challenges I've noticed and I really need to make them, you know, to disturb them, you know, shake them so, so they, they react and yeah, yeah, that's yeah, impression yeah. I have. They, them, are, yeah, they, really they don't care, they don't like what you said, they don't complain. I mean, I sometimes may, may, may do a mistake yeah. and kind of wait somebody to stop me and maybe they don't dare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, it's again, We need to get into new trends and we need to understand how they think so we can help them and we can yeah. get through them with technology. Or with Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, what I'm also interested about is also uh, on top of their personality is wondering, I wonder, do you have people from around the world or, you know, um, people from different generations, you know, people who, who would have worked as a translator and then come back to this or, you know, um, mm. Is it very varied? Mm, not really. Maybe in the past it used to be like this. Now what I see that most of them are basically that they have finished the degree yes. in, in translation and interpreting. And now it looks like you have to go for a master's if you really want to get in, into the into the you know working or active working community. Which is good because typically those masters, not only this one, but any master would would give you some some internships in different companies. So it's a great way of of getting into into yeah. into the you know into an active life, yes. or a productive life. So yeah, I would say most of them are students. Most of them, are, uh, la last year I remember uh, there was quite a lot of students from uh, Latin America. Oh, Latin America. Yeah, a few students from Asia. It was also interesting because it's kind of challenging because you're doing a master's in a language which is yes. even not your second language, yes. maybe your third or fourth language. That is really interesting. So that was also interesting. But what I'm missing or you know, what I would like to be able to, to do is again to, you know, not me sharing information, but getting, you know, getting feedback from them, trying to understand yes. what they can add or what they can yes. share with the community. Absolutely. Uh, because I'm sure, you know, they are like boxes, they are closed boxes, they, they don't share, but they have an amazing world inside. And I know that, and we need to find yes, a way to get, get it out. To get it out, <laughs> yeah, because when you, you know, when you talk to them, like maybe on, uh, after the class or something, they really... They're, they're really, really interested. interested and yeah, they yeah. really have a lot of things to say, but they just don't say them. Yeah, they're a bit so shy. Yeah, that's yeah. my personal challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
sounds like one but sounds really interesting so um so just coming back on um on technology and our industry but also um in connection with with the students how do you see the role of um of technology such as machine translation and in our industry for future generations you know um I'm going to use air quotes here, but do you think we will we will one day be able to air quotes get rid of the human skill, like do without human skills uh, in in translations? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> but I see there will be a a, a fault. Things will change. Is you know, it's not is. You cannot stay to, you know, it's, this has always been like this, so we want to, to continue. No. Mm -hmm. The role of the translator is going to change. The role of the translator is going to become, you know, because it really depends on, on, on the scope of, the, of, of what this dress is going to be used for. You know, I went to a seminar on quality yeah. no long ago and they were, as, you know, the question was, what is quality? It really depends. It really depends Very on subjective. what do you want that text for. Absolutely, so you, yeah. you cannot measure quality because it really depends. If you just want to, you know, to, to get quick, clean information so nobody, somebody can understand what's something about, then just, you know, you, you, machine translation may be good enough. If you really want to go into more detail or more boutique uh, translation for some reason, then machine translation can be helpful, but definitely a deep post is going to be needed. So I see the role of translators changing, evolving mm -hmm. to something new, to more source control, helping the text to become um, uh, more machine, machine translators, uh, machine translation um, friendly. Yes. Uh, I see the translators um, training the engines. I see translators um, um, doing other jobs, not purely post editing for some languages. And, and again, we should not be aware of those changes. We need to be smarter and try to say, okay, this is a direction. What can I do in order to take and make an advantage of that instead of, you know, just complain or yeah. get afraid. Makes sense. Yeah. Use the technology that's here to help you, mm. but yeah, try to see um, how it can help you. Yes, absolutely. Um, and you're also, um, I understand that you're also a member of uh, Women in Localization, talking about localization and translation. Um, I'm curious, can you tell us a little bit about your role um, as specifically as a member of the Catalan chapter in the organization? Yeah, Women in Localization is, is, is really wait because there's going to be amazing things getting out of there <laughs> uh, in the near future. Um, right now, I'm basically a member of the Catalan chapter. I'm exploring the possibility of getting more active role. So, I mean, this is at that time I'm, I'm really thinking about that. But the women localization, and in my case, the Catalan chapter, because this is the one I belong, is, is really a platform. First of all, for networking. Yes. Networking is the next generation or I don't know how you want to call it but it's the next step in the globalization and localization industry absolutely yeah. it's really who you know and you know meet people talk to people understand what they think get ideas out of other people people again going back to what I said with the students we need to make them talk and they need to listen and they need to ask questions and we will you know we are looking forward to help them to get yes. there and women in localization is is a way of doing that Um, you're not going to find answer to everything, but as long as you have questions, this is the right place to go. Um, women localization is growing. It's growing a lot. It has become a non-profit organization recently that gives uh, the, 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 the executive team in Women Globalization a tremendous opportunity to to start uh, new chapters and to work in, in you know, help people to get there and it's the right place to start asking the right questions and to start knowing what's going on in this industry. It's not LinkedIn anymore, it's not I have to send my CV to somebody. Yes. It's really getting there, knowing people and being there, asking questions and don't be afraid of making mistakes. That's that's not an issue at all. And you know, and that's also what I'm trying to uh, to, to share with the students. It's not in here in the 
in the school or in the class that you're going to be able to find a job. You really need to start moving, making uh, talk, yeah. start sharing and make yourself visible in those yeah. different areas. Get out of your comfort zone exactly. and go and talk to people, especially exactly. um, if you're looking for a position in um, in the mm -hmm. area, if you want to stay in Catalonia. For instance. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Don't be afraid of bringing new ideas. That's that's mm -hmm. wonderful, and and I I understand that you also um, you're very busy. You're also a, a, um, a people like me ambassador for Spain for the Wise campaign when it comes to science and technology. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the organization, Wise is an organization aiming at providing B 2 B services to employers, mm -hmm. educators, and training providers. Um, the company offers expert support services to organization seeking to improve their gender balance, including engagement and advancement of women. So that sounds extremely interesting. I'd like us, um, like us, like you to tell us a little bit, bit why you've joined the organization and particularly about being involved in the in the People Like Me campaign. Sounds wonderful. Yes, that that's that's very, very nice. And I, I I'm like, I, I'm, I'm happy that you asked me that question. Um, I got involved by pure chance at CA Technologies. We were doing some, uh, you know, it's part is one of the sponsors of the People Like Me campaign, and basically this campaign targets girls in high school or before high school mm -hmm. that you know we want to reach them, to get them, and help them to understand why they should be doing, or they could be doing, sorry, uh, technology and yes, science. Right. Because the, the statistic that, or the data shows that uh, girls or ladies are getting away from technical um, degrees, mm -hmm. basically, we don't know why. And we were trying to tell them why technical degrees yeah. are exciting. And because I have this background on biology, and although I don't have any formal education on technology, mm -hmm. I do a lot of know of technology. So I really wanted to get them engaged because there's something we are not doing right as women is that again we by education or because this is the way we you know we we've been growing i don't know typically we are remain quiet and that's not i mean there are a lot of great potential women and great active women that have a lot to say absolutely yeah. and they don't need to be aggressive or they don't need yeah. to you know it's just that we are it's a cultural thing we are kind of used to to step back and mm -hmm. and we need to to stop doing that and i thought this campaign could be a great uh, example because it's a really nice way to get you know to get in contact with very young uh, girls so we can motivate and you know yes. we can um encourage them to take those technology Absolutely open doors to them yeah. Yes. yeah yeah so so yeah i'm very happy that the technology has given me the opportunity to, to participate in in this campaign that sounds wonderful that's mm -hmm. actually that's such a great initiative and um, is there are are there any other projects that you'd be working on you'd like to share with our audience? Well, yeah. um, many, <laughs> many. In fact, I, I, you know, my husband tells me typically, you know, stop doing things. You just should stop. And, st and you know, I just cannot stop. But I guess my nearly my near future is I really would like to get more involved with uh, women in localization. Yes, I really want to. Uh, to take advantage of the company and also to, not only for me, but for my friends, for the people I know, you know, get promote that uh, to help women to become more and more and more active. Uh, I'm also going to be involved in this transition from C technology to Broadcom. Uh, that's also very challenging and very interesting to see how, you know, we do the things we do because we believe it's the best way of doing it. But there's always other ways of other things yes. that we can do. So I'm really looking forward to 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 know a new company, and and to help them to organize the globalization team and to organize the, the translation. I really would like to take some time to concentrate on my PhD because I keep on, you know, sharing with my my. Uh, my colleagues at the university that I have everything in my head, but I need to find time <laughs> and to organize, organize yeah. to put them in written in a formal, you know, in yes. you know, formal test, which is not easy it's <laughs> because, exciting. you know, it's really, it's really just organizing the yes. ideas and trying to put them in a, yes. in a, um, 
proper way. Absolutely. Learn more technologies. I'm also excited about technology and really, really curious on, you know, what, you know, I'm in the localization area, but what does e-commerce do? Yes. What does this, you know, the um, travel do industry, the, the health industry, well, how do they do the things they do? It's, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. I find it very interesting. Um, and finally, I would like to help other women, as I already mentioned, to to again step out of the comfort zone, to get noticed, and to 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 do good jobs and and to enjoy what they're doing. I have had, I mean, I'm very lucky because I have had very spirited women in in my career. Uh, Jenny Lu, she was my one of my first managers. She mm-hmm. was a mentor. Uh, Nivedita. Nivedita was one of my recent managers. She's an Indian lady, tremendous, amazing, really powerful, really strong. Really, you know, she has really helped me to get through and to to step up. Um, Yuka, Yuka Nakasome, also a friend of mine, and she's really doing a great job and she's really helping a lot of women to to go there and, and learn and, and yeah. speak up. So. I want to pay back all this, you know, somehow all these ladies that had really inspired in me, uh, my, my mother, my sisters, you know, it's really, I'm a very, very strong promoter for women uh, and, you know, to help them to to get there, step there. Give themselves the best chance. Yeah, yeah. I, I was recently in Lockwall CRL, I was presenting in the Process Innovation Challenge. I was really good I really enjoy it but I was the only girl the only women there and that was very disappointed mm. I was disappointed because in the public most of the the public was feminine and I talked to most of those yeah. ladies and they had great ideas and they were really doing a great good job each of them in their areas so they should be there also yes Not I only, know what you mean I mean I yeah. was there I'm uh, very happy to do that but it's really, I really want to spray all the women um, to get out there and, and start sharing. If you go to college, I would say 95% of the uh, students are women. Mm-hmm. But if you go to the upper management roles in our industry, most of them are men. Why? What 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 had been done wrong through our career that we missed these, these positions? So that's what I... I guess what I would like to do in, in the next years. Wow. Well, <laughs> I don't know how to how to do that. <laughs> so I'm going to start asking questions and start oh, trying I didn't to. No, that is fascinating. Like, uh, that's mm-hmm. just wonderful. Um, thank you so much for uh, for spending um, um, a good um, half an hour, I think, even more. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's been a, it's been a pleasure to have you on the, in the studio today, share all of your experience and your tips uh, and your projects. Uh, we're really looking forward to seeing all of this, and um, and uh, and for sharing all the great work that you do uh, at CA. So. That's the end of today's show with Patricia Palladini Adel from CA Technologies. Uh, please tune in again to see the next Vista Talk show where we'll be discussing more interesting discussions with interesting people from around the world. Thank you. <laughs>